what is electron and how did it come to be um and how does that relate to everything else so i'm going to recap really quickly what i've talked about in the past um so if I, I'm going to start by telling you what Electron is. So Electron is a way to combine JavaScript, HTML, and CSS uh, into an app. So what it, that means is that it's a web server and it's a web browser combined into one application that you can send to your friends and run once you have it finished. Uh, this is why this this appeal, the appeal of having a uh, basically a you know self-encapsulated web server and web browser is very appealing to all the developers out here who do web development. And if you don't know what Electron is, it, it might be better to tell you how, the things that use it. There's a good chance you're using multiple versions of Electron on any given day. So um, Electron is built as is, is in Discord. It's in VS Code, which we'll talk about. Um, it's in uh, Belena Etcher, which is a tool for making USB sticks. Uh, it's in things as small as Mulvod, the VPN, which is just to, you know manages your connection, and uh, many many other things. Spotify, Slack, all of those technologies are Electron. And there's two things to point out about that. Um, one is web technology is everywhere. If you don't learn web technology and you consider yourself a software developer, you know, you know, you need to learn web technology. This is the reason web technology is so important. In fact, I believe it's the reason the numbers changed at the Bureau of Labor Statistics slightly and the, the web developer numbers went down and the software developer numbers went up. Because when you make a tool with Electron, do you call yourself a web developer or are you a software developer or are you an applications developer? It really grays that line between applications development and web development. And that's pretty much the way the world is going right now. In fact, almost all significant development is primarily that users, user end development applications are web tech, whether they're in Electron, which allows you to obviously like Steam or Discord or something like that. It's actually Steam's not Discord, but uh, not, not Electron. You can, you can distribute it and you can give them the app and it works. So um, when you combine that with the, the other web technology that's really hitting hard now called progressive web apps, which means you just, you just use your browser and your things and app on your phone. You, that requires a web browser that supports PWA. Electron does not. And the reason is because it puts a copy of Chromium, the web browser, the same web browser that's inside of everything else now. Edge, Microsoft Edge just you know famously last year announced that it's now based on Chrome. The only main web browser that's not is Firefox. So... Um, so Chromium is in everything, including Electron. And Electron is now in everything. <laughs> but how did it come to be, and why do people love it, and why do they hate it? Um, and I, I want to talk about that. So let's first of all talk about the history of Electron, where it came from. Um, and I'll try to avoid bringing in the lessons of the past that we seem to be failing to acknowledge again. We seem to make the same mistakes over and over again. Um, so... Once upon a time, there was a browser called Sublime Text. And this um, is still a very, very popular browser with a lot of people. Uh, the reason it fell out of favor is it's highly proprietary. You have to pay for the full version. Uh, people very, very violently and vocally complained about not being able to get their updates um, added to it. Uh, it's con it's, it's, it's a, a combination of C and, Py and Python. The extensions are written in Python. Um, the, uh, the, the creator and owner of Python is not particularly, I mean, of, of Sublime is not particularly responsive. I have, I don't know him. I've not met him, but, uh, I've read a lot of people who are very angry because they submitted fixes and they couldn't extend it. So, but Sublime blew the world away because up until that time, the only editors we had to pick from were Visual Studio not Visual Studio, not VS Code, Visual Studio, the actual big bloated monster. And um, where is it? So I don't know. This is not, this is visual, that's not, okay, that's not fair because when Visual Studio Code took off, they actually rebranded Visual Studio. Uh, I won't say much more about Microsoft Visual Studio. It's still a very popular tool for um, coding. Uh, you know, C++ in particular, uh, there was a really fantastic blog from somebody, 
from Microsoft who was going through all of the dark corners of the code base of, of, of Visual Studio that had never been used. He said there was something like 50,000 lines of, of code, of C code, in Visual Studio that had never once been used in any of the previous versions and releases. So it's, it's what happens when software keeps getting added to and nobody really does any refactoring or looks at it. And it's monstrously huge. And um, is the reason that Microsoft really jumped on the bandwagon with Microsoft Visual Code, which we'll talk about in a bit. So um, the other IDE that was really big and bloated that everybody used, that they still use, is Eclipse. And Eclipse is the, was the hot new Java um, uh, editor. Uh, and Java was the hot new language back then. Java was a massive disaster. Um, massively disaster. It didn't deliver on any of its promises. And yet it's been deployed everywhere in the world, largely because of its marketing campaign. It had the largest marketing campaign of any language ever known, ever. And I'll talk about that perhaps in another video. So we had to pick from Eclipse if we wanted an IDE, which is kind of a bigger bloated development environment that's graphic and designed to help you out when, in fact, I believe it just gets in the way. Um, and then you have, um, you know, Visual Studio from Microsoft. Um, and those are pretty much the only, there was, there were other tiny ones. I think IntelliJ started coming up to, up with, with at that time. But if you want to do any development besides that, you were using VI or Emacs and you were working with, with, with C code directly or, or code, you know, direct code. So back to the sublime thing, it, given that, that, that environment of massive bloat, when sublime came out as this hyper light editor, everybody freaked out. And I would want to say that was in, Oh gosh, when was that? That had to have been 2010 or 11, I think. It might be a little bit later than that. But um, so when this came out, it was so wicked fast, it blew everybody away, and it was it fit the perfect niche between. Um, it did a perfect uh, niche between uh, using a big bloated editor and a tinier editor, and so that is where this comes from. Everybody just jumped on it immediately. Um, Python was really hot at the time. Python was hot in the 90s and continued to be really, really hot through through probably 2013, 2014. Even, even today, it's still hot, but it's declining. And um, so you had Sublime Text just blew everybody away because of its responsiveness and the, the format. In fact, if you don't, if it looks like VS Code to you, that's because Sublime pretty much defined the look of the modern light editor. And but it was proprietary and had problems. So that immediately spawned a bunch of people who spawned all of their own versions. And so you saw the editor, um, uh, Adam, uh, pop up. Uh, Adam is, uh, is another hackable text editor um, that you can change. Uh, it was basically the answer to the Python C combination in Sublime. The Adam editor was done entirely in web technology. In fact, Git... Hub developed the web technology to use for it um, in order to to make it work. And what they did is they combined, as I said earlier on, they combined uh, a web browser, a uh, a server, and a way for the two to talk uh, really high, really quickly called WebSockets. Um, and they put those together and they made um, Electron. And so they developed Electron to build Atom. And that's why you see similarities in their, in their icons and stuff. And in the process, they, they did. They successfully built a really great editor that was pretty much sublime, but with web technology. But in the process, they really gave up on uh, performance. Um, and Atom really lagged behind. Um, Atom did not do some things that I think they could have done. I think it didn't use Canvas, I want to say that. We're going to get talked about that later. But it was it was really clunky and slow and it just sucked. I mean, there's people who still swear by it, but it, it just it was trying to be too minimal and it was it was so slow compared to Sublime that people were like, no, just no. <laughs> I mean most people. Um, at around the same time Adobe's like, ooh, let's get in on this. And since Electron was out there, they made brackets. So if you can't tell, their brackets editor looks very much like the other one because it's pretty much the same thing. In fact, I think it's even built on Electron. Um, and this is their take on it. So this is really popular with a particular type of developer, um, you know, live preview and stuff. Uh, it's still very lightweight. The one thing you could, and then 
of course, let's okay. Let's keep going down the um, the path. Uh, so the next browser, the Microsoft kind of weighed in on this whole thing probably in twenty. Well, I want to say fifteen. Is that right? Maybe seventeen. And they came out and said, no, no, no. You guys don't know how to do editors. We've been doing IDEs for developers, developers, developers. You know their tagline uh, from the beginning. So watch us do this. And they took and to their credit, they took all of the lessons from the past. They took uh, everything that was going on with um, Sublime. They took the designs of that and the speed. Uh, they took Atom and they go, hmm, yeah, okay, yeah, let's build it on web tech. That's definitely a thing because that's more, you know, easier to expand on. And, and, and they really like that idea because you can leverage web developers much more. You can uh, the C coders. Um, I mean, that's a common conception i guess i don't know if that's completely true i think there's probably more web devs out there than than c coders uh so so they and they went for it and they took all the lessons that they had learned over the time with microsoft visual studio the big bloated one um and and they rebranded that one as well by the way and they just went at it they made this new design setup they they said screw light uh we're going to keep it light but we're going to do two things we're going to add extensions we're going to make it for everybody. We're going to make it a whole marketplace. We're going to have an extensible framework so people can tie in Git, you know, really. Actually, Adam, that was one thing Adam was their main mission at GitHub was to tie Git in so that the, the, the pain of running Git was kind of passed. And so then they then comes along, you know, Microsoft and like, yeah, look at all these extensions we can do. And they really, really did it well. In fact, the single best thing that Microsoft did when they got a hold of this uh, and in fact, when I opened, uh, I said, fine, let's see what this thing is about. I've always been a VI guy, but I had a lot of people who found this um, from my community and they were using it and, and they, I mean, if nothing more, they love the colors and I deal with a lot of young people. So it was, you know, it was a colors thing. Uh, believe it or not, they like colors that so make some code more. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I was like, let's look at it. And I pulled it up and I swear to God, I thought it was written in C. I was like, how are they getting that to be so fast? And it's because I had looked at bottom and brackets in the past and they were kind of slow. And I was like, man, this thing is snappy. It's like really snappy. And um, and I mean, I thought it was Sublime Text. I had, how are they doing that? And then one of my members um, told me, goes, no, no, it's not C. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's all Electron. I, I don't believe you. And I had to really, really dig and I found out that the reason they were able to make this so snappy is that they're using all GPU acceleration. So they're using Canvas, which is, um, you know, a GPU accelerated component of web development instead of trying to render everything as HTML and CSS. And I believe, I believe, I'm not sure that Adam tried to, I don't know if Adam used Canvas or not, but that meant a lot of extra work because that meant instead of using, you know, the web renderer that's built into the web browser, they had to write code that would render uh, something that looked a lot like that to Canvas, and Canvas would then be um, a GPU accelerated thing. Now, that's my understanding of it. Um, that's what I've read. I, if I could be wrong on some of that. Um, if I am, if somebody let me know. But so that was my explanation about why it was so fast. Now, the sad thing is, is that VS Code is actually ridiculously slow now. It is suffered the same fate as so many other things particularly if you run even like five extensions um, and and it's a you know they're pointing fingers at each other microsoft points fingers at the extension developers and extension developers point fingers at, at microsoft you know bloating the base framework and it's slower i mean i hope it goes up and down right it's sometimes it's really slow sometimes it's fine but just to boot the thing takes like you know, like, I don't know, at least 10 seconds, 10, 20 seconds. And so if you're going to do any kind of editing and you're the kind of person who doesn't want to leave your editor open all the time uh, and you're in and out all the time, that's not, it's not the best tool for you, but it is a good tool. We'll do a full re review of, of Visual Studio Code all by itself. Uh, I do want to do a video that compares VS Studio Code to Emacs, to Vim, to Nano, to Joe, uh, to all of that stuff. So we can talk about performance and why each one might be valid for you, including Sublime. Um, so the reason this story, this, you know, this kind of walk down memory lane is, um, uh, just a conversation about why, uh, Electron exists. So these editors kind of 
kind of came up and we had kind of the editor wars, uh, I think it's pretty clear to say that Visual Studio Code has won that now. Um, overwhelming majority in those surveys I've seen is that code is Visual Studio Code or is much bigger than everything else. And 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 the technology that was used to make it is the same technology that was that made Atom. And so we still have Electron around. And so now what you see is you see everybody else is like, hmm, I want to make an app like VS Code. That's a pretty snappy app. I was done by a reputable company, blah, blah, blah. And so everybody has jumped on the Electron bandwagon. And they're all making everything in Electron. But there is a problem with that because the, the size of the files is monstrous. You're including a web browser every time. So let's let's count them. If you have VS Code running, you're doing your editing. If you're listening to music on Spotify, if you uh, have to connect with your friends on Discord and you're working, so you have to have Slack. Uh, let's say your VPN uses one. And I don't know, maybe you have to run a random application like Blenda Etcher to make a USB stick. That's six copies of Chrome, not counting your web browser that you haven't even started up yet. So let's say you have a version of a web browser like Chrome or Edge running right now. That's seven versions of Chromium, seven specific instances of Chromium running on your computer. And if you think most desktops can manage that kind of memory, most can't. And this is why people hate Electron. Because many of those applications should never have been done in Electron. And to give you a good example of that, so Pro, the guys, the people at ProtonMail, I, I'm so impressed by them. They made an application that looked in every way like Electron. And I popped it up and was looking into it and everything. And sure enough, it was Go using Qt, using material design. So it looked like an Electron application, but it was wicked fast and tiny. Took up almost no, no memory. It's called ProtonMail Bridge. And I'll talk about that in another thing. But Qt is the proper choice there. Qt is a widget library uh, that's used in your car dashboards. Another thing we'll do is Qt versus GTK later. But that the, the thing I'm trying to convey here is that the right technology was used. Uh, I'm going to contrast that. So the VPN uses it as well. I'm going to contrast that with Mulvod, which is a fantastic VPN client. Uh, I it's, one of, it's the only uh, VPN that will... Um, allow you to pay in cash and not have any records of your um, of you at all. And if you understand cybersecurity, then you might wish that. Otherwise, you just use ProtonMail VPN. Uh, but this little app that I'm showing you here is a full Electron. And all it does is show you where you are. And they did that because they just wanted it to look nice. And, you know, that's the kind of decision making that gets us into the problem we had in the old days with Electron when this massive Java JRE was bundled with their application which was bundled with Eclipse which was bundled with this and this and you get these massively bloated things and three of them would take your system down and so that was a dark time IBM released their chat client called same time it not only had a full JRE a full you know Java instance in it it had all of Eclipse's framework and then it had all of its code on top of that just to talk to chat I mean, it, it was like two or three times the size of Chromium now. And, um, you know, and then they did the same thing for their, their same time application. So then you would have multiple of these bloated things on your desktop. And the, the problem is, is that the people who are architecting these solutions are driven by the wrong things. They're not driven by the end user. What if everybody did this? They're being driven by what can I get away with? And those are my mantras. What can I get away with? And what can I, you know, versus, um, what if everybody did it? And so many developers, not particularly the developers, but usually the um, decision makers are like, well, can we get this out faster and make more money if we do it by just bundling Electron in it? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. We can't even find any QTC developers. They're really hard to find. And, you, and there's QT bindings for everything. That's a you know, oversimplification. So so then what do you get? You get this massive, um, these massive bloated applications and then you put 10 of them on a computer and it totally dies, but nobody cares because it just ups the performance of the systems and pushes out more computers and everybody's happy who's making money. But if you don't buy into that whole idea of, of like, let's just bloat the crap out of everything and make people buy new computers, uh, which I don't, then, you know, you don't, you're not happy by that. I mean, I'm not... I think Electron is a great prototype tool because you can write, you can create an entire application as a prototype. And I'm really encouraged by progressive web apps, which we'll talk later. Progressive web apps essentially give you the same thing as Electron, but they leverage the existing browser that you have on your system. 
and in every other way they are the same and i mean the same they can do the same canvas rendering uh we will uh, we're starting to see this now we're starting to see websites that have um full editors and everything in them uh and they're also localized so you can like bring them and, and put them in your on your local computer and just reuse your same chrome that you have on your computer or on your phone or something and you don't have to and that's truly what they tried to do with java in the early days so then basically they, they say that the web People say this, but the web is your computer. The web, it's called the web platform, right? And your web browser is getting bloated to the point where it can be an application um, platform as opposed to just a, a way to share documents, which needs to be considered separate. That's a very important topic for later. All right, so that's pretty much where Electron is, where it came from, and um, why people hate it and why they like it. Uh, they like it because they can just write web apps and, and technologies and use React and Vue and everything and make really amazing things really quickly. But they, the other people hate it because they can do that <laughs> as well. So they make a bunch of tiny little, you know, non-essential apps or whatever, and they don't ever think about the other people that are making those same apps for those tiny little computers with only 16 gig of RAM and, and RAM's cheap. So who cares? you know and uh so i that's that's what like that's what's going on all right so uh i'm gonna mark the end of that of that and then i'll try to answer some questions before i move on to some other things um but i think that's a that's one that i can do